This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Imagine if you could study programming so effectively that even in a job market like this, you could still land a job and actually enjoy coding. I want that for you. So I put all my experience, research, and painful mistakes into a formula that you can actually use. And spoiler alert, you might want to take some notes because we're going to go way deeper than just syntax errors or basic to-do apps. Because let's be real, you already know all of that and you deserve a lot more. You see, the way you approach programming can leave you with a six-figure salary and everything you've ever wanted, or it can leave you with countless hours wasted and broken dreams. And to figure out why, let's look at this. Do not, do not, do not apply without a referral. Trust me, you will be shooting yourself in the- This is Sajad, and he got his first software engineering internship at Amazon with a referral. So that must mean it doesn't matter how you program, you just have to know the right people, right? Well, slow down. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is connections matter, but they're not the whole picture. Because when you do get an opportunity, what matters just as much, if not more, is your skill set, And that's what we're here to build. So how do we get you from, I kind of know how to code, to I can actually use code to solve real problems. Look, it's easy to get caught up in learning syntax and completing tutorials, which don't get me wrong, are really important at first, but the biggest progress happens when you start applying what you learn to solve actual problems. So pick projects that challenge you. For example, you can build a tool that fills a personal need, or you can even try and automate something in your life. This will teach you to think like a developer, not just someone who knows a programming language. Think of it this way. Let's say you're learning how to play the guitar. If you just memorize each chord by itself, sure, you know those chords, but the music won't make make any sense until you understand how the chords form a song. And programming is really similar. The code you're writing is the tool, but understanding why and when to use it, that's what actually makes it useful. It's about getting to a point where you're not just writing code, you're actually using code to solve real problems. Okay, but you've probably heard that a million times. Everyone knows you have to do project-based learning, but there's actually one more crucial thing you need to do if you really want to land a job or an internship at a specific company. And this is especially important if you're not sure what projects to build. Okay, let's say the reason you're studying programming is to land a job at a company like Meta, for example. If that's the case, you don't want to just build any projects. You want to build something that shows you understand Meta, like their tech stack, their products, and the kind of challenges they face. And the reason for this is to prove that you can think like someone who already works there. For example, if Meta uses React heavily, try building a project using React that focuses on something Meta might value. And to be honest, when I was studying programming, I actually really messed up on this step because I was applying projects project-based learning, but I built a lot of projects that were completely different from each other. And I've spoken to Google engineers and recruiters, and one of the main pieces of resume advice they've given is to have projects that let recruiters know about you without needing to explicitly state it. Think of it like building your own personal brand as a developer. If your projects are scattered across different fields, it's hard for anyone to understand what you're really good at or where you're aiming to go. But if you focus and really understand one sector, like data science projects, AI, or full stack development. Not only will it help you stand out, it'll also demonstrate a level of commitment and expertise, which is exactly what companies are looking for. Look, there's a problem with programmers today, and in order to understand it, I want you to take a look at this. And it was so weird because it wasn't like they were completely dumb. But when it came time to writing basic code, they would make the most trivial errors. That's why I think you should focus more on the basics. Get really, really good at the basics. Get really this is Neatcode. He's a previous software engineer at Google, and what he's saying is that people often try and learn really complicated concepts without first learning the basics. And you can imagine that this leaves them with no real deep knowledge of anything. This is actually something I've noticed everywhere, and it's what's holding a lot of people back as programmers. You see, here's the thing. Now more than than ever, it's tempting to jump right into these advanced things like machine learning or building full stack web apps. And chances are you probably think you need something like this to put on your resume right away, which is a trap that a lot of programmers fall into. Because by skipping over the fundamentals in a rush to get to all the cool stuff, you end up becoming someone who constantly relies on AI or stack overflow for every little roadblock. And this is because you don't fully understand the code you write. And I've seen this over and over again. When people don't have a deep foundation, they get lost the second they face a new 
new problem or don't have a tutorial to follow. Okay, so how can we actually learn? Well, you need to make sure that you really understand the basics. Really understand and practice with different data structures, loops, variables, and things that you might often overlook. I like to think of learning as going to the gym. You have to be really consistent and improve little by little. This way, when you finally get to the advanced topics, they'll not only be easier, but actually meaningful. And one last tip I'll give on this subject, if you really want to learn effectively, you need to have active engagement. So basically, when you're studying something new, don't just passively read or watch tutorials. Challenge yourself to rephrase the concepts in your own words, or maybe even teach them to someone else. And the best form of active engagement that's worked for me is to try and apply concepts in a small project. This way, your brain will actually form some sort of reasoning and memory in these concepts, instead of just mindlessly reading or watching tutorials. As somebody studying programming, you can't rely on anything. And that'll make more sense when we take a look at this. Math, automata theory, operating system, but this is not what I wanted to do. I just wanted to program games and websites. I wanted to make my own Minecraft mod. So what I learned the hard way is computer science is not software engineering. This is the coding slot. And what he's saying is completely right. The study of computer science is extremely theoretical. And the time that you do get to code will be spent using some outdated language or some something that you're completely uninterested in. And not only that, but sitting in lectures is a method proven to be ineffective when studying programming. So that begs the question, how can we learn the skills that can actually have an impact for us? And this is why I use today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a learning platform where you learn by doing. With thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI, Brilliant is a learning platform designed to be uniquely effective. Their first principles approach helps you build understanding from the ground up. Uh, each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you actually play with concepts, which is a method proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. Plus, all content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and much more. Brilliant helps build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorizing. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also be becoming a better thinker. Brilliant also makes it really easy to develop a powerful daily learning habit because learning a little every day is one of the most important things you can do both for personal and professional growth which is why brilliant helps you build real knowledge in just a few minutes every day and it's the opposite of mindless scrolling brilliant also makes it easy to learn anywhere right on your phone with fun lessons you can do whenever you have time whether you're diving into a new topic or doing a quick practice session you can level up on the go in just minutes you can even get familiar with python and start building real programs on day one with their built-in drag and drop editor. You can also learn the essential coding concepts from loops, variables, nesting, and conditionals. And Brilliant makes it really easy to develop your mind to think like a programmer by writing complex programs to build games and apps. So if you'd like to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org lattice or scan the QR code that's on the screen. And once again, huge thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And overall, if this video helped you, subscribe.